Welcome, one and all, to Wizards and Wordsmiths, our uh, authorial adventure that we're going to be putting together here. We're going to be playing 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, kind of an all-in-one adventure that we split into three parts. Um, I'm absolutely thrilled to have an amazing array of authors that are going to be playing in this game this afternoon. I'll have each of them introduce themselves, and then I'll uh, introduce myself as well. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Kevin Hearn. I'm the author of the Iron Druid Chronicles, which is an urban fantasy series. I also wrote an epic fantasy series called The Seven Pennings and co-authored The Tales of Pell with Delilah S. Dawson. My very next release is called Ink and Sigil, and that will be out on August 25th very soon here. So I hope you will give it a try and hope you dig it. A lot of fun. Hi, I'm Adib Karam. I write uh, young adult novels. My first, Darius the Great is Not Okay, came out back in 2018, and its sequel, Darius the Great Deserves Better, comes out on August 25th, a good day for books. Hi, I'm Andrea Robertson. My latest book is Forged in Fire and Stars, and it is the first in a new fantasy series. I have also written the Nightshade series, the Inventor's Secret series, and Invisibility with David Levithan. I'm Sherelle Smith, and I write young adult and middle grade fiction, nonfiction, cross genre. So my latest is um, a historical fiction World War II story called The Blossom and the Firefly, which is about a teenage kamikaze pilot and a schoolgirl. And uh, my latest comic is this trade of Avatar Sute's Path from Dark Horse. I also have a historical fantasy based on the Nutcracker called The Toymaker's Apprentice and a uh, speculative cli-fi called Orlean set in a future post-disaster New Orleans. And this is my first D&D game ever, and I'm so excited! <laughs> Uh, hi, everybody. I'm David Yoon, and I'm the author of the YA novel, uh, Frankly in Love. Let me get on there. This came out in September of last year. Um, but my next book, actually, I have the cover. Um, there was a reveal recently. It's on my phone. And it's called Super Fake Love Song. Awesome. And it comes out in no on November 17th of this year, right after what should be uh, a totally normal presidential election. <laughs> and I also am the author of an adult thriller about the internet called Version Zero. And that comes out in uh, January of next year. Sweet. So I'm Jim Zub. I'm a comic book writer, probably best known right now for writing Conan the Barbarian at Marvel. And I've been writing the official Dungeons and Dragons comics since uh, fifth edition actually launched. So um, this is a the, kind of newest big omnibus collection. It's called Days of Endless Adventure. It's the first three mini series that we put together uh, all in one. So it's just packed with all sorts of awesome Dungeons and Dragons comic book fun. And then uh, I'm also the author of a series called The Dungeons and Dragons Young Adventures Guides. We've got four books out so far in this series and they're the perfect way to bring new people into the hobby, show them the ingredients for making amazing fantasy adventure games and stories of your own. So if you know someone who wants to get into D&D or, you know, young readers who uh, would be engaged by, you know, the kind of uh, Dungeons and Dragons sword and sorcery stuff, make sure that you, uh, you know, get them on board with the Young Adventurers Guides. So we've got some experienced D&D players. We've got a brand new player in the mix. And all of them are going to be on a uh, kind of one-off adventure that we're going to be doing in multiple parts here for you. The name of this adventure is called The Yeast You Can Do. It's a uh, cooking-centric adventure, fantasy, sword and sorcery, uh, and a little bit of sass along the way. Uh, I'll be your dungeon master, and I'm really excited to have this crew of players with me here. I haven't played with any of them before, so it's going to be an awesome experience. Uh, we met up before this session, and they all made their characters. They're going to be introducing them to you over the course of the adventure. I'll set the scene, and then we'll dive right into it. Our adventure takes place in the uh, town of Cuisine. So it is this uh, fantasy uh, village that has existed for quite some time, and they specialize in cooking, of course. In fact, this is the home of the famous Guild of Gastronomy, where uh, chefs from all over the realm come to not only learn, but to build their skills or show off their uh, confectionery creations of all types. 
uh, there's a lot of prestige just to get into the Guild of Gastronomy. And this group of heroes here, some of them have been studying for some time. Some of them are angling to try and get in the door or impress uh, a panel of judges on this, a very important day. So there's a group, uh, we're in kind of this main fest hall, and there's a, a, a large crowd of people. Imagine like a, a series of bleachers full of villagers, and they're all cheering and excited. This is going to be the, uh, the equivalent of the, uh, the realm version of the British Bake Off or whatever. And you've got four uh, judges that are on hand, and they're going to be uh, judging our, uh, our contestants here. So uh, the first judge is a gentleman named, he's the, the chief chef, chief, and he's a high elf of great renown. Um, he's a master chef and the guild master of the Guild of Gastronomy. He's got a very uptight appearance, long flowing hair tied back uh, in a ponytail, and he's wearing his you know chef smock and stroking his chin as he looks at each of you. The second uh, judge is the gentleman named Sakond, and he's a uh, human who is quite a uh, specialist from what you've heard in the cooking of meats, and thus he's heard of David's character before and gives him a particularly a look. Our third chef is called Triplin, uh, a, a gnome, and she is um, very excited, to sort of looking around excitedly at the group. And fourth is an out-of-towner, a uh, dwarven judge who has come in, and uh, his name is Sedwich Sourdough. He's looking over in Kevin's direction, extremely, extremely displeased. <laughs> um, Chef Sheaf uh, opens the ceremony, and uh, after the crowd finishes cheering, as he stands, he uh, you know puts his hands out to make the crowd stop, and then he opens up the ceremony. Good afternoon to you all. Thank you to all of our various students and visitors and hopeful appetizers, as you will. It is my pleasure to welcome you here to our village, to the town of Culinary and the Guild of Gastronomy. Each of you here before me have a specialty and have already prepared a dish as an introduction to yourselves. And thus, in front of this crowd, and before these people, and for the glory of your personal gastronomy, I would like for you to introduce yourself and tell us who you all are. And you'll also describe what you look like to our, uh, the rest of our players here. And what your specialty is and what dish you have brought to show us your skills at the beginning of this competition. So he sort of looks across each of you, and then he points over to Andrea's character. Hello, hello, hello! I am so pleased to be here, Sheep, and other illustrious judges and contestants. My name is Keely by Koi Baxin Glindif Nimblerook. Uh, though, though, so I know most of you are not deaf tongue, deaf tongue gnomes like myself. So please just refer to me as Teely. You may be familiar with my family name of Nimblerook, as we are from the Nimblerook Creamery, renowned for its delicious goat milk and cheese products. I myself, however, specialize in Teely's sensational seasonings, which will be highlighted today in my glorious tea cakes of tantalizing tears and tantrums. Eat them only if you dare. Amazing. So what does Teely look like? Oh, Teely is, uh, Teely, ha uh, she is um, three foot two and she weighs 35 pounds. She has silver hair that is up in big, big tails like this. Amazing. Uh, and she has violet eyes. Awesome. Cool. And so she's holding this platter of tea cakes of the that tea seem cake. to be quivering on their own a little bit, like they might pop off the platter. Amazing. Very, very cool. All right. So she look, does not display any particular emotion, positive or negative about this. From there, he kind of looks off to one side, points towards David's character. 
My name is Barbacoa, Barbara Chaos. I am the master of the flame. I am the worshiper of the smoke soul that rises from that which I cook. My, my scales all over my body protect me from the fires that I work with, for I am dragonborn. And I also really love meat, <laughs> any kind of meat. I commune with that that I kill and cook, and, and I accept its soul into my body. And what have you brought for us today? I have brought a smaller creature this time. I have roasted spiders and laced them together into the sheet that I hold before you. <laughs> crunch. Pull from the sheet and notice how delicate the crunch with just a hint of oil and just enough protein to keep you coming back for more. I see. <laughs> Welcome to you. So you're a dragonborn. Uh, you're a dragonborn uh, cleric. What uh, What do you look like? What is your appearance? Obviously, uh, you've got this dragony scale. You're you're of a red dragon, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So you've got these deep, kind of reddish scales across your body. Red scales. Yeah. Uh, my fingertips are, however, blackened and sharpened uh, <laughs> from years of um mistakes and i prefer wearing suits nice because, <laughs> because i have a formal streak i don't know awesome <laughs> great and, and also goggles are always useful you've got a pair of goggles on yeah they're on my forehead right now awesome. because obviously awesome. i'm not cooking good stuff all right so uh sheaf nods and then looks over in uh kevin's direction well, hello there. I'm Keggy Grunfeld. I'm a hill dwarf from, you know, the hills. And I come here today to share with you my specialty. I'm a condiment sommelier. I make all kinds of fantastic sauces. And the thing is that I'm really excited about something I've been working on for years. It's a lavender gravy that I'm putting on a poutine. Now, not many people would, would say that you'd like a floral aspect to gravy, but I've mastered it, I think, and I think you're going to be very pleased. So I brought you this poutine with uh, cheese in it, and of course, uh, on, on, melted on top of the fries, we've got this lavender gravy that gives you a very light experience, unlike almost every other experience with poutine. So uh, that's my specialty. I'm a fellow who's uh, rather stout, and I've got a big red bushy beard, and uh, I've got a, a, an axe for when I need to be chopping something down, but mostly I'm here to give you aiolis the, of your dreams, mustards, of <laughs> that kind of a thing. Uh, Kevin, yeah. you, you know I'm Canadian, so you're clearly trying to like uh, uh, move in with the poutine stuff there and, and impress me. I'm, I'm like teeing on the Ritz. One could argue that he's desecrating the dish. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see about that. It's true. All right, moving uh, right along here. Um, uh, so Sheaf just nods briefly. You could see again the uh, the Dwarven Judge Sedwich. He just scowls over uh, uh, towards Keggy's direction. It's really awkward. He's just he can barely contain his his frustration about this other dwarf. Uh, Chief kind of gives a little side eye to the dwarf and he quiets down and then he looks over in Adib's direction. Uh, so a, a very slight 13-year-old uh, half-elf clears his throat. He is wearing kind of yellow shirt and black trousers. He has very like anime hair where it looks like he tried to style it, but it just kind of looks like the horns of a great horned owl <laughs> on his head. Um, and he has his hands in his pockets and he's looking at the floor and he clears his throat. He says, um, <clears throat> I, I am Jeno and I make frozen treats. And today I have prepared for you a saffron granita and I hope you'll like it, thanks. And then he uh, stuffs his hands deeper in his pocket and muses on whether uh, Sheaf played the role of Thranduil in Peter Jackson's The Hobbit trilogy. <laughs> nice. Sheaf just sort of nods briefly. And then he gives a look over in Cherie's direction. 
and a tall, lean, brown-skinned elf with no hair, dark eyes, wearing a deep green vest and soft doeskin breeches, um, nods gracefully and says, um, I am Ulan for Quilandriel, but you know me as Ula. I seek the sweetness in life, and today I present to you with a dragon's egg. It is made with a pearlescent candied shell, and inside you will find a dragon's blood pudding made not from blood, but from dragon fruit that has been roasted in the flame of a dragon. And within that, one of the rarest treats that can be found, a treat I risked my life for, molten darkest chocolate. It will change your life and endanger your soul. Mm. All right, so as you introduce that, as soon as you introduce that dessert, as soon as you finish describing it, there's actually a low kind of rumble that you feel and everyone's sort of like, oh, that's quite, and for a moment, Chief just sort of looks like, oh yes, this is all very normal. And he goes, ah, you know, this place is very um, magical and sometimes we have a little, uh, little tremors here and there. And then the tremor starts to increase that much more. And you feel this shaking. Yeah, everyone shake your camera there, clearly. <laughs> it starts to shake as the, uh, as the ground starts to, uh, uh, to move. And you hear this voice and it says, sweetness, there shall be no sweetness. And then all of a sudden you see these grains, these strange crystal white grains rolling across the floor. They bounce along the, the, the tiles of the floor in the grand fest hall, and they start to coalesce together, at first into small little piles, and then building rapidly, building into, into something that moves, something humanoid, something, something skeletal. Instantly, you sort of get this dry kind of strange sensation as these skeletal forms rise up from the tiles. These are very salty skeletons, and you are about to be assaulted. Dang. <laughs> Roll initiative, everybody. Salty! Show us what you can do. <laughs> All right. I'll roll initiative for our, uh, our enemies. The uh, monsters have an initiative of 12. Let's go across. Kevin, what's yours? 14. 14. Okay, so I've got little sort of tiles I put together. It'll help me keep track of everybody. So 14. All right, uh, Adiv? Uh, 18. Okay, so you've got 18. Then we've got Andrea? Eight. Eight. Okay, and then uh, we've got Cherie? Uh, 12. 12? All right. So you're... Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. 14. No problem. Oh, so you are just ahead, I believe, of Kevin, right? Yeah. And then David. I got 17. 17. Okay. So we've got our order here for... We're wasting all our good rolls on initiative. Stop. Yeah. No. I'm thrilled. Save them for later. <laughs> so these salty skeletons sort of start shambling forward, and they're uh, attacking you. They're attacking your dishes. They're oh, no. causing chaos in the middle of this wonderful fest hall, top of the order, uh, Gino, Geno? Yes, Geno. You're at the top. What would uh, you like to do? You're a, just to give everyone a bit of a thing, you're a sorcerer and you- I am a sorcerer. Half elf sorcerer. I'm a, oh, I like to say I'm the blizzard wizard, even though nice. I'm a sorcerer and not a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That's so um, wrestling friendly. The bird, how far away are the skeletons? Like, how far are we from the dishes we present? Is it like a Great British Bake Off situation where it's like yeah. there's a gingham table and that's all that's separating us? Right. Yeah. There's basically just the table uh, separating you. They've appeared and formed right in the middle of of your presentation, quite honestly. And so there are five skeletons, and it can be really boring just to use numbers and it gets harder for people to remember which one's which. So to keep it simple and to give a visual component, even though they don't look like this per se, for simplicity's sake, what we'll do is we'll give the skeletons uh, the names of the Beatles. So you can tell me which one you want to attack, John, Paul, George, Ringo, or unfortunate Peter. All right, uh, which of the Beatles is attacking my dessert? Uh, they haven't got to it yet because they haven't gotten their turn. But uh, Ringo looks uh, quite disgusted with your dish. 
Okay. Uh, Jeno is in that case going to uh, take a. Oh wait, I have to remember which of yours. Yes, uh, he is going to uh, use Mage Hand. Okay. And uh, snatch his dish off the table <laughs> and back back away. Okay, so you're just grabbing the dish. And he's grabbing the dish as he's also running away from the skeletons. Amazing. Okay, so what I want you to do in order to uh, kind of disengage, because you're right there in the midst of the combat, can you make a mm, let's say either um, what's your highest here? Either a an acrobatics roll or a deception roll? Uh he should probably roll deception. Okay, so make a deception roll. As you cast right. with one hand, you're kind of distracting with the with your own. Uh, he rolled a natural 20 on that. Wow, you uh, guys really are blowing all the good rolls right now. I know, right? Uh, so I should have used one of my spell slots for that if I was going to use it. So you cast Mage Hand, pick up the dish effortlessly. It sort of sweeps off the table, keeping it intact. And then you're able to do a quick little flurry with your other hand, and the skeleton is distracted looking over. As it hisses, little granules of salt are spraying out of its mouth at you. But it, uh, you are able to disengage successfully. All right, Barba Chaos. I'm going to attack. All right, which one would you like to attack? This is, this is sacrilege. Uh, <laughs> who do we attack, Ringo, last? I mean, Ringo is the one that, uh, that uh, uh, Gino is, uh, uh, Geno is uh, interacting with, yeah. Well, I'm gonna assume he's the he's the aggressor, so okay. I'm going after Ringo. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit him with a great club. All right, <laughs> you pull out this great club. This dragonborn just pulls out this great club and heaves it towards uh, one of the uh, salty skeletons. And I roll a six. You roll a six. Okay, so you bring it crashing down. The skeleton easily sidesteps around it, and your great club smashes into one of the tiles and cracks it. And all the judges wince as, <laughs> as the tile cracks in the middle of the floor. If it's you like, had meat, you'd be my next meal. It's like but a, you're a skeleton. Physically, you physically harmed them. They're just like, oh. <laughs> And they're just, just so, so displeased with you. All right, moving right along. Ula. Yes, um, I know what I want to do. I need to be walked through how to do it. Okay. Um, I shout for people to stand back, and I want to use Thunder Wave. Awesome. All right. So you're going to cast a Thunder Wave spell. So what you need to do is go to your spells we're all using D beyond by the way so the nice thing about that is all the stats are up on the screen and each of the uh, categories has um you can do a hit roll or you can roll as needed and then any damage or anything else it will auto calculate for you as well so i'm on my thunder wave spell and i just click the little box yuppers and i roll a uh two fives so wait Yep, a 10. I roll a 10. Awesome. So you let loose this thunder wave. And the good news is, is that you are, I'm just going to look up here. So just uh, off the top of my head, does thunder wave, thunder wave can hit multiple it's, targets? It's, it's, hold on, let's see. Thunder wave um, sweeps a force out in front of me. Each creature in a 15 foot cube originating from me must make a constitution saving throw. Amazing. All right, or they're going to take those. You rolled yeah, on a failed save. A creature takes two damage. Uh, it says two d eight thunder yep. damage and is pushed ten feet away from me. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't pushed. All right. So, uh, and you rolled damage already because you rolled that. You said you rolled two fives, or I, yeah, I rolled I rolled ten damage. Ten damage. <laughs> oh nice. my gosh! Nice. All right, so you unleash this thunder wave, and uh, I'm going to roll for each of the skeletons here. So, John. John fails his constitution save. Paul makes his constitution save. George fails. Ringo fails. Luckily, Pete. Pete saves. So uh, John and Pete are the only ones that uh, made their uh, constitution save. That means you just wiped out Paul, George, and Ringo. The bad news, though, is that you also hit the table with everyone's yeah. dishes on it and said everyone's dishes except for mine careening across the floor meat <laughs> and mustard and poutine and 
poutine. Foods oh. every, my poutine. All the food spraying all over the place at the it's same time. It's all going to mix together in your stomachs anyway. Uh, and then, so the, everyone just sort of gasps. Sim was, oh my gosh, what has happened? The two were says, I guess I win. <laughs> winner by default <laughs> um look back and they're just sort of hissing at you and uh, you know kind of uh thrown off their turn is next anyways so one of the salty skeletons dives at ula your ac is 13 and they rolled a 15. So you are uh, the the cre the skeletons have these weird crystalline claws, and it slashes you across the shoulder for two damage. As it hisses saltily at you, and then the second one is going to try and attack Barbacaos. And your AC. Come at it, me, bro. <laughs> what's that? Come at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out Barbara Cass's voice. Your, your AC is 10. <laughs> so you, you take three damage, Dave, <sighs> as it also sort of slashes at you and is able to pierce through your scaly armor. The salt gets under literally under your scales. It's very itchy and annoying. That is irritating. <laughs> um, all everyone is sort of in in shock at this, uh, you know, madness that's happening around them. Tealy, you're at the bottom of the turn, but you're also able to react to everything else that's been going on. What are you going to do? Um, I would like to. Um, I think I'd like to to use my rapier. Sure. Draw forth your blade. Draw forth my blade. But it's more like this because it's so small. It's just a tiny little. Okay, I rolled my damage first accident. Here we go. No, no problem. Roll the, the hit roll. Let me know what you get. Oh, fail. What'd you oh, get? No, was, I thought it was that a two, but then it rolled over to a 12. 16. Amazing. That little die just goes into place. Wait, wait, wait. The, drum, the drama is great. All right. So you strike out at uh, John. Roll yes. for damage. Five. Five. So you smash your rapier through uh, the salty skeletal form, and you you sort of breaking apart bits of its rib cage and spine as the salt is uh, spraying everywhere. It's not quite done yet, but it's clearly uh, seen better days. All right, moving right along. Now we're back at the top of the order. The uh, judges are yelling, and they're just like, "This, this cannot be. We must, we must." you know uh, uh uh save yourselves be careful everyone all right top of the order is jeno i don't think i ever got to go <laughs> <laughs> oh no i'm oh, just standing here i'm no, so no. sorry Kev. i'm so sorry i don't know how i missed you on the thing i apologize go on the attack there so you have your little short dwarven legs and they haven't That's quite right. you the battle yet. Look right <laughs> over your head there. I apologize. Well, I'm completely horrified by all the sodium on display here. I'm going to take some of it out. You can't have that much in the poutine. <laughs> completely ruined anyway, being on the ground. But I'm going to go after, is it uh, Pete? Is it unfortunate Pete? But still, it is unfortunate Pete. I'd like to charge him and tackle him. <laughs> oh. Yeah, go for it. And because of my foolishness, I'm going to give you advantage on that roll. Because I should, your turn should have gone earlier. My apologies. No worries. All right, so for the attack, I've got eight. It's a good thing I have advantage. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Let's try that again. Here's hoping this one's better. <laughs> I got eight again. Oh, <laughs> no. I tell you. Okay, so you go diving at this skeleton, and it sort of puts a leg up just in time, and you come crashing down onto the tiles. Uh, uh, just very, missing. Very bad dexterity, but my heart is in the right place. That's true. It's true. All right, now we're at the top of the order. My apologies. Mm -hmm. Adib, you're up. All right. So which of the which of the so Pete salt skeletons are still alive? Are still, are um, still around. The other three are all shaken up, and uh, their salt is is scattered across the ground and the food. Cool. Um, well, I think Jeno, now that uh, he is clutching 
his dessert in his left hand because he's right-handed. So he's keeping a like a good grip on the dessert to protect it. Um, and he twirls around like a Sailor Moon type flourish, <laughs> makes a finger gun and points it at uh, at Peter. And he's going to cast uh, Ray of Frost. Awesome. All right. I love the flourish there. Uh, tell us your roll. Uh, which one you're attacking Pete, right? Uh, he rolled a 16. 16 is a hit. Give us your damage. All right. Uh, he rolled four cold damage. Four cold damage. All right. So the uh, the salt starts to stiffen up a little bit. You hit it with this ray of frost, and it's sort of shivering, shaking as it's trying to reach towards you. Not quite destroyed, but also uh, far from uh, its perfect form now. Okay. Moving now. Barba Chaos. I think I need to hit everyone with my breath weapon <laughs> because I forgot to brush this morning and okay. it's real bad. So what are you unleashing here? Uh, breath, my breath, my brass, I'm actually a brass dragon, sorry. Nice. But uh, my brass breath breath weapon is a 2d6. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll. Roll to hit, roll to hit. Um, it's actually, it's, for, for hit DC, it says 11 dexterity. So, oh, so they're just doing a save. Okay, no worries. Yeah. So I'll roll for unfortunate Pete. Salt it. makes you bloated. John ah. unbelievably uh, uh, pulls off another save. He is uh, truly, truly impressive. All right, so what's the damage? There is a 30 foot range. So, oh my gosh. I love so all the food that's on the floor. You're now just also uh, uh, breathing on the nice char. Give me a nice yeah. Maillard reaction. That's all right. right. Let's <laughs> do a damage roll. I got an eleven. All right. So uh, Pete is uh, completely blown away. John <laughs> is barely hanging on, just sort of kind of stumbling about. Uh, Ula, you are up. I. Uh... There's only one left. So who's Lucky, who's left standing? Lucky John the skeleton. Lucky John the skeleton. Uh, that's a hard one. Um, what if I just do? Can I just do a bludgeon? Uh, I don't understand how to do this. Let's see. Uh, what weapon? Because there's, have? I have a crossbow and a dagger. That's not much to you can it. Hit him with the dagger. That's fine. All right, let's Go hit him with it. the hit him with the Hold dagger. It. So, I, so I just roll hit. Yep. <laughs> And uh, that's not good. The drama. Uh, six. Six is not Ooh. good enough. Lucky John is still lucky. So you uh, streak out with the knife and the, the skeleton rears back just in time, snarls at you as a, it's really, it's a skeleton. So it's just mouth open that goes. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Keggy, now in your proper initiative order. <laughs> Uh, so I, I, I whip out my hand axe and I say, oh, you're going to get some of my special sauce. And so I, I go ahead after him and I roll uh, my attack against him with my hand axe. And uh, this time I got an eight. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> this is the luckiest skeleton that has ever been. I'll tell you. Also, that. what's with the eights? Eight it's his lucky eight. number, his unlucky number. It's freakish. All right. So you swing at it and the skeleton steps aside. This thing's just uh, doing a, a dance. It cannot be struck for some reason, but it is going to try and attack you back. So it, uh, as you swing, it now tries to rake down your back and it misses as well so you pitch forward so much that it's just out of reach as the skeleton tries to grab you next in the order is tealy is john is still standing john is still still going lucky john lucky john Keely rolls her eyes in frustration and stamps her little feet <laughs> uh, then she pulls out a rapier again all right so the rapier is out Gonna take a stab. Oh no. And she was so frustrated she got off balance and only rolled a six. This is truly first level D and D and full effect. <laughs> All right, so you're striking out. Everyone's just the judges are like, destroy it, destroy it, destroy it. Tell what the so upset about our, 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 our condiments and things on the ground. Right, you're slipping all over the place. There's so much food yes. everywhere. All right, uh, our sorcerer. Okay. Um, 
So Jeno narrows his eyes at uh, John, this lucky guy. John, and he says, "Hey, chill out." And he is going to cast <laughs> uh, Frostbite on him. So Lucky John has to make a Constitution saving throw, DC oh thirteen. My gosh, finally fails. Yes. All Excellent. right. Uh, he's going to take one uh, d six cold damage. Let's see what that does. Oh, no, he takes he takes six, two cold six, damage. Six, six. That is enough. Believe it. Yay! Oh, my. So the the skeleton suddenly crisps up a little bit, gets a and then crumbles into its composite salts on the ground. <laughs> Everyone is just sort of a, a gasp. Uh, uh, Triplin, uh, the, the, the third judge, she's just like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, that was one of the most, I mean, very strange, quite odd. And then the second judge, Sakond, he goes, all of you, look over there! And he points. And where they were keeping the prize of the day they hadn't even had a chance to announce it yet. At the end of this competition, one of you was going to win the highly prized recipe for the pie divine. No. And now it's gone. <gasps> and there's a trail. Although there's the salt there, you see another small bit of salt carrying out the door. The recipe of the pie divine is gone. Sheaf is enraged. <gasps> the pie divine, our greatest... Recipe, the, the Guild of Gastronomy's finest dish taken by some strange, salty interlopers. <laughs> this cannot stand. I ask you, all of you, will you track it down? Will you do this for the Guild? Get oh, our recipe back? Well, yes, what, Chef. What, how, how much does it pay? <laughs> <laughs> he sort of looks at you. And he goes and he says, I'm sure you will be quite well compensated if it is returned. Okay, but like, how well is well compensated? <laughs> like, like, let's talk numbers here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Triple uh, goes and says, It's worth a fortune. It's worth a fortune. <laughs> Do you carry the holy spatula of her di divine grace saute? We we do. Do you carry the divine spatula in your heart? We, sure, yes, great. Then by the spatula of saute, I shall avenge thee and well, get your no recipe back. Died here, but yes, yes, get the recipe back. That's great. Okay. So I'm I'm actually on my knees, scooping up salt really quickly and putting into a pouch because I okay. think skeleton salt could be really useful in my sensational Ooh. seasoning. <laughs> like Himalayan sea salt. I kind of do it on the sly, you know. Yeah, just, and, not, and at the same time, I'm, not, I'm nodding. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. I will very happily, happily go on the retrieve of the pie divine recipe. Awesome, Ula. I am. Um, I'm already shouldering my pack. <laughs> I look down at Teely and I say, "Don't use that till we know what it does to people." But scoop some up for me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. So I her. <laughs> you guys are pulling yourselves together. Is there any additional, before you head out on the trail, literally the salt trail, um, <laughs> do you have uh, any other equipment or things you want to grab or stuff you want to request? Well, what does the recipe look like? Is it like a three by five index card or uh, is it a booklet uh, made of skin? What are we looking for? It's an incredible scroll. It's a, in, a, in a scroll tube. You can't miss it. It glows with divine light. It was... Just underneath it, we had it in a platter with a cover. It's very beautiful. You you, you couldn't have missed it, but we missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna wants to look around the room and see if anyone looks uh, perhaps unsurprised that the recipe is stolen or even happy that the recipe has been stolen. Said which, the dwarf is just sitting there with his arms crossed. He just looks annoyed at everything. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Jenna pulls these. a spoon out of a pocket and starts eating his granita because he doesn't want it to melt. And at this point, it's clear there's going to be no judging for the foreseeable future. <laughs> eating away. And it's uh, just really delicious, and he's not going to share. Nice. nice. All right. So, um, second, uh goes this, well, if you are taking on this quest, uh, I, I have something for thee. So he sort of reaches around, and he pulls out 
a small uh, barrel, and then he gets a few pint glasses, and he starts pouring drinks. Mm. He's pouring pints for each of you. And Is he it the pint of leveling up? It is not a pint of leveling <laughs> up. Oh. Oh. So, but he does hand you a drink of uh, what he calls the blessed beer of cuisine. Are you going to drink? Jenna is underage. What are you doing, my dude? <laughs> he just he he doesn't recognize uh, ages of elves. So he's just handing them off. So and he's going to that's drink. A good way to get your liquor license revoked. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's very kind. That looks quite refreshing. I don't mind if I do. Okay, so Keggy kicks it back, and you get five bonus hit points above and beyond your regular. So Ooh. you're all healed up if you were hurt. And now you have plus five hit points. Wow. Ooh, nice. I guess. Anyone else? <laughs> I'll drink it. Yeah, I will too. Let's all right. Happens. You all take the blessed beer. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, <laughs> our sorcerer, they can offer you a non-alcoholic alternative. Okay. All right. <laughs> Jenna will take the non-alcoholic. <laughs> all right. So you Tastes have, great. Less blessings. That's right. So you're all healed up if you were hurt. And you have five... Uh, temporary extra hit points above and beyond your norm. So make sure you add that to your sheet. Going to my sheet. Um, while you're drinking, uh, 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 Keggy, Sedwich comes sort of sauntering over and he looks at you and he goes, Look, I know you've done wrong with us, the dwarves. Well, this is your chance to do better. This is your chance to make something of yourself there, Keggy. I came in here without any desire to see you succeed at all, boy. You don't, you don't seem to have... I don't know. You made mistakes, though, and it bothers me. But maybe this will do, do something right. Go get that dang recipe and bring it back here in the name of the dwarves. You hear me? I do, and I'm sorry for what they did, and I will do my best to make it right on this occasion, and I'll find that sacred scroll. If you don't do it, you better get out. Like, go pickle yourself or something, because you won't be welcome back here. I understand. I understand. Family, yeah. man. Family. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The rest of you, any other things you're gathering before you head off on this quest? Can can I take an action? Yes, absolutely. Can I? Um, We're in I, a general role play circumstance, so if you need to do something, you just okay. sort of on it. No I either. just wonder if I can uh, taste the salt to see if I can determine its origins. Oh, sure. So uh, what you do in that case, you're going to make a skill roll. Uh, and in your case, let's say investigation. <clears throat> Okay, I'm an investigation. Click the number there, the bonus. Number. I did, and oh, that's just sad. Um, seven. Seven. Okay, you taste the salt. It's not low quality per se, but it doesn't seem to. There's nothing particular that jumps out about its origin, unfortunately. Rats. Rats. Uh, how do you feel? Are you are you okay after that? Um. <clears throat> thirsty no, fine. <laughs> you finish the beer <clears throat> to wash yeah. it <clears throat> wash it down with blessings all right so the crowd is a little bit kind of aghast and shocked chef sheaf you know quiets them down and then he points to the adventurers and he goes says these young appetizers they wish to show us the full meal deal of what their worth is. <laughs> they want more than mere ingredients. They wish to cook. With gas. With, with, with gas, yes. So, <laughs> with our blessing and blessed beer, they shall head forth and recover the recipe for the pie divine. Restoring our honor and allowing us to continue our competition. Let us wish them well and send them forth. And so they all cheer 
as you guys walk out the door. And mm -hmm. move forward. Oh, 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 your uh, 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 foodie adventure here, your, your, your foodie quest. All right. So what we'll do is we'll take, uh, use this as sort of a natural kind of end chapter point. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, for watching, by the way. We won't be doing introductions on each and every episode, but we'll take a short break. And when we come back, we'll head out on the salt trail. And we'll all be level two, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> no one's like, I'm sorry, that seemed like a milestone. I'm a, sting, I'm a stingy uh, DM. That's how we roll. I might have known. <laughs> <laughs>